Wait, this is Inkblot again. What? Interesting. Oh, yeah, I remember uh, Popgun was, like, getting progressively more and more upset as the tournament was going on about how... Why, why do these teams just keep going back to Inkblot? Why, this is clearly a neutral map that everybody likes. So, like, how do you think you're going to get an advantage over your opponent that way? <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm gonna he, be he, honest. Like a lot of these, a lot of these maps are just not fun to play on. <laughs> yeah, it so like you'd it, rather something where it's like if you don't lose your first fight, you just kind of lose the game. Mm -hmm. But uh, something like Inkblot's a lot more back and forth. You have a chance to come back. Yeah, so it might just be like preference in terms of which maps are competitively viable. Um, I, I remember uh, also in um, Super Smash Brothers because I was a, I was a melee player for a long time. Um, oh no shot nice a lot of the time you would see people just going to battlefield which is like the most neutral stage in melee um they just like you want to go battlefield and sometimes they just gentlemen's agreement to, to have the entire set be on battlefield just like mm -hmm. that's the only map where i care about beating you like <laughs> <laughs> yeah pretty much yeah. i know i will have advantages on other maps but I just want to beat you on an even playing field. And so, like, you'd, you'd sometimes see matches that went that way. Um, there, there are, you know, some arguments, for example, for you lose on one map, but you're like, all right, all right, no, nah, that one was a fluke. I've got you this time. And if you do win the second one, that can be a big momentum shift for you that, like, mm -hmm. you feel like, okay, yeah, I definitely made adjustments. I definitely made it work better. Um, so sometimes you see that sort of a play and I've seen that, that thing work before. Um, and sometimes it's just like, oh man, we screwed that up. Let's try that one again. Yeah. I, I feel like, uh, it's also like a consistency thing as well. So like, um, a lot of, a lot of the maps in this game, if you die, like if you lose a team fight, pushing out, like say for example, like eel tail tower control or something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. You have such little defensive options that if you have to push out from defense, it's like good luck, you know? Good mm -hmm. luck stopping them before they get to like 20 or something, right? Yeah, they're going to so, put a crab on your bridge and you're not going to be able to exactly. walk in it. <laughs> so it's like, it's like, do you really want to risk like a, an easy loss like that? That's like very hard to come, uh, like come back from. Or would you rather like a more balanced map that even though there's maybe a higher likelihood that you lose, it's easier to actually like have a competitive game mm -hmm. during it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And another thing that I took away from Smash Bros was like, there, there are some stages that are smaller, which means you die earlier because you're closer to the blast zones. It's, there's mm -hmm. less space for you to retreat with, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and on paper, like a lot of those smaller stages favor the, the characters that, KO faster because they can just hit their KO move at 60 and kill you instead of hitting it at 120 and kill you. Um, yeah. And that makes a huge difference there. But sometimes also, like, when I was like, okay, I am fundamentally the better player. I just want to remove volatility from the game. Like, if I feel like I'm in that position, then that's the sort of play I might make because then I know that I'm going to get more neutral engagements. Like, I'm going to get more opportunities more coin flips, I guess, where since it's a loaded coin, I'm more likely to win the more times the game has to reset the neutral and I have to play over again. Um, right, whereas exactly. yeah. I lose to the, the lesser team in the situation where I, that they can beat me in fewer opportunities and fewer openings that I give them. Um, so that's something that can play into it as well. That said, this is Tempest counterpicking this against Sayonara. Tempest, you would have to, you know, assume are the underdogs here, and they also did just lose the first round, so um, it, it's a little bit surprising to me that they come back here, but maybe they like it better for a certain mode. Um, and I could definitely see that being in the case, like, in, in Splatoon 2, you saw a ton of, like, heavy, heavy aggression inkjet comps, or, like, even the, uh, whatever the Octobrush was that had beacons on it. Was that the Nouveau? I think it was the Nouveau. Um, that had on, on, sorry, which one? The the, the oh, no, Octobrush with beacons, yeah. I think that was new. Octobrush yeah. uh, missile on new yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you'd see that one like just diving into the enemy spawn and putting beacons in their like closed area to the left of spawn, 
um, mm-hmm. and jumping people in and ha- getting ink jets up there and all this crazy stuff. And so maybe that plays into Red Shell's play style and they're trying to go for that hard offense where as soon as they get one run, they're already going to be like living in their walls and will be able to uh, keep them locked out. So maybe that's their thinking. Yeah, possibly. Yeah.